Hey there, and welcome back to Garage Time. I'm in an especially good mood today. I'm not sure why. I got this sanding block in my hand, and I gotta do some sanding on my unpainted bumper. But to make this video a little more interesting, I have a giveaway for you guys. If you go back to some of the early Garage Time videos, you're like, Tom, this is a dungeon. We can't see what you're doing. And I've added lighting since then, and things have improved a little bit. Um, I'm not gonna say it's great, but it has improved, and uh, the YouTube channel, I think, has improved to some degree, and I'm getting more used to doing this. But a big part of it is due to lighting. And I have some LED lights in the shop here, and that particular vendor who provided the lights is also willing to give some away to you guys so that you can work on your projects, which is super cool. <sighs> Garage time. So if we take a step back here and look around for a minute, there's the original fluorescent lights here. They don't do that much. They're pretty dim, to be honest. And then there's an LED panel there. And then this one here is the one that I like a lot. This is the one that's for the giveaway. It's so bright you can hardly see it. But let me turn those lights off and you can get a better idea. The good thing about this is they screw into a traditional light bulb and they have panels that you can flip up and down. That's what I like, especially when it comes time to welding. I can reach up, tip of my toes and kind of move these. One of the things that happens oftentimes when welding is the light will be pointing right at you and you get a glare in your helmet. So much better. The eligibility to win this is for two particular people. I'm gonna choose someone out of the Patreon group. There's several of you there that uh, have been donating money on a monthly basis to support the channel. It supports not only my time in creating these videos, but it also supports things like camera and lighting and equipment and microphones and things that sometimes fail over the course of the three years I've been making videos. It's just an added support and I wanna thank those people for supporting me and I will choose out of that particular group. I'll announce a winner over there. If you'd like to join, I definitely would appreciate it, but this will be for existing Patreon members. Just check the uh, notice there and I'll select some of you to get these lights. I think they're super worthwhile. Even if your garage is already well lit, you might be surprised at what this does to your lights. All right, the time has finally come to put some primer on this thing. I did do a little bit of filler on this top surface, mostly because it was a little wavy, but I think with uh, some a little bit of primer on that, it's all gonna even out pretty evenly. And uh, so everything's been sanded with at least 80 grit, mostly 180 because it's already a painted surface. And if anyone knows what this blue circle's for, leave a comment below. That's kind of a reoccurring circle throughout this build. If you know what it's for, let me know. This is wax and grease remover, Southern polyurethane 700-1. Uh, I applied this before sanding and after sanding. So we'll make sure that we get good adhesion with the Southern polyurethane epoxy primer. And then on the last wipe down on the visible surfaces, I only go in one direction. And then I'll fold the towel. And I'll do another pass. Fold the towel again. I've mixed the activator in and it's probably more than I need. I wanna do three coats here. 
but uh, I'm gonna let this, they want it to, uh, you know, sit for 30 minutes. So I'm gonna get my spray gun ready, let the wax and grease remover evaporate from the panel, and then we'll go ahead and spray this. This is now dry to the touch, and one of the things I really like about SPI's primer is it's glossy. So this gives you kind of a first look at what the reflections are gonna be like, and it actually highlights any imperfections in the work. So I can still see some areas where it needs more sanding. I can see, if you look really carefully, I can see you know the 80 grit scratches from the sandpaper, and that will get filled with either some dolphin glaze or just continued sanding of the primer. So this is really useful. It's getting close, but it's by no means ready to paint. This is a piece you haven't seen in a long time. I made this years ago when I was doing the backdate conversion. So I have a short hood latch panel and a long hood, extended long hood to make the car backdate. And this holds the seal. There's a channel here in which the rubber seal slides in. And this closes out kind of the empty space right back here. So the seal will be up high like that. And then this just creates less of a gap when the, when the hood is open. So you won't see daylight through there. This is a custom piece that I made. And then of course back here, this is the closeout piece. So if you're not running an oil cooler, which I'm not with the 912 engine, this will just close out this panel here. So this, this fits in there like so. And I'll probably paint this black. And the, of course the bumper is gonna be yellow, Bahama yellow. This is an RS bumper, a clone bumper. And the RS came in a touring mode and a non-touring mode. The non-touring mode is definitely the lighter weight one. And I think it just had a stripe across here. The touring car had an actual deco with some chrome trim and a rubber bumper in there. This won't take much impact at all, but that's what the touring cars came with. Came with a rubber deco strip. And I am probably gonna do something a little different. I'm not a big fan of just the black stripe. I think it's a decal. I could paint a stripe on there, but I'm thinking about doing my own molding, something a little bit between a decal and the bulkier deco strip. So let me know what you think on that one. I'm not making it on authentic RS, but I do like this RS bumper because it has the air cooled, it has the oil cooler here, and that's gonna be required for the sort of horsepower I hope to use. Best thing to do now is just watch this paint dry. Uh, that's kind of par for the course. I prefer to let the paint cure and shrink before sanding it. If you sand it too early, it shrinks after you sand it, and then the scratches and all the things the primer does is pretty much useless. So that's uh, what's gonna happen. Just gonna let this dry. I'm actually leaving tomorrow, which will be Saturday when you see this video, with the family, we're going to Hawaii. So I don't have anything planned for next week. Sometimes I have a video kind of in my back pocket where I can just put it out on a Saturday, but you are fully caught up to me. I don't have anything for next week. Unless someone in Maui wants to, you know, maybe meet up and share their car or share their garage, maybe we can do an on location video. But right now, you may not hear from me next week. All right, take care, enjoy.